welcome to episode 104 of Sport SA Daily Diary. Today we're chatting to young South African swimmer Dunay Kutsia. Good afternoon, Dunay. How are you doing today? Good, thanks, and you? Yeah, very well, thank you. By the looks of things, you're back in the pool. Yeah, I just got back. Um, I think I, I finished like half an hour ago, so it was a rush back home. My hair still wet and everything, but yeah, I'm super excited to be back in the pool. Um, it's great to see my coach again. I haven't seen her in four, three months. So being with my friends back in the pool and just training again, it's amazing. And Dobby, what have you been up to the last three months to try and keep a, a relative amount of fitness? Because it's not as if yeah. you can jump in a home swimming pool and do 50 laps. It's, it's Yeah, so um, at the beginning, it was very hard because um, we have a pool at home about eight meters, but it's free. it was freezing. So I tried to, um, a, a lot of swimmers I know also try to um, tie a, a stretch cord to a tree or something and then swim against that just to like keep your fitness up. I tried to do that, but my pool was very cold, so I had to swim in a wetsuit. And then at some, st- some stage, I was just like, that's not happening anymore. So um, I started running. I used to run a long time ago, just like with my dad on Sundays. And um, I bought some new running shoes. And then as soon as we hit level four lockdown, I started running again. And then my dad also um, managed to grab some weights and like a boxing um, thing from before lockdown and my sister and I just basically did that to stay fit and then yeah towards the end my dad um, managed to get like a secondhand heat pump that he bought us for our pool so I did an hour and a half against a stretch cord every day and I think that that definitely helped me to keep my aerobic fitness up a little bit. I'm sure yeah. I've been chatting to a few swimmers and with the Olympic Games still probably happening next year it's probably the swimmers that are taking the majority of the strain because your sport has probably been one of the most difficult to actually train in. Yeah, and it's, it's, and as I told you, um, it's really hot now that I'm back in the pool again because not being able to feel your stroke the way you used to and being able to move up and down and up and down the whole time, it feels very weird and very strange to get back to the pool. So I think it will take definitely a lot of time for as a swimmers to get back to the speed that we were before the whole lockdown. It's, it's, I think um, it's going to be fine for us just to train, but to get to that speed again, I think it's, it's going to be very hard. And uh, Dina, you're shooting the lights out in the pool at the moment in, in fly and freestyle, and we'll get onto that shortly. Um, but let's go back a few years a bit earlier. Um, When you were a bit younger, I believe you were playing hockey and netball and a bit of gymnastics. Um, (laughs) Carry on with one of those. Yeah, well, I love netball a lot and gymnastics as well. I was good in all of um, netball swimming and gymnastics. But um, I actually did play netball up until I was 13 years old. So I tried to do that for as long as possible. But then as soon as I got to high school, I just it started to get too much to try and juggle school gym, um, netball and swimming. And then I just made my decision that I want to carry on swimming. My dad was also a swimmer and he also loved the sport a lot. And I mean, I enjoy, enjoyed every single bit of it. Um, and when I was 13, I actually realized now is I'm starting to get great in swimming. So I really want to be good, take, take one sport and give my everything, put everything into that. And then, try and be as best as I can be. And I've been loving it ever since. Good to hear. And Dina, you're yeah. at, at Uffies in Pretoria. Um, you're obviously swimming for the school team as well. Or, yeah. do, I mean, do you swim for the school yeah. team? Yeah. So, um, the school is very, very supportive. And from the start, I did have a meeting with my dad, with the school principal. And I, I did tell them that swimming is a dream of mine to go to the Olympics one day. So, um, and 2020, it was supposed to be that in my matric year. So we did have to do a lot of planning with my school and they were very, very supportive. And I did tell them that I won't be able to um, be at every single friendly school gala um, because it does every Thursday, I suppose I was, yeah, every single Thursday. And I told them I can't miss too much training. And they told me that it's perfectly fine as long as I can just swim the inter high, which is the big meat of the schools. And I haven't missed one. So 
I mean, it was, it was amazing. I enjoyed every single bit of it. And it also it taught me a lot about team sport, that swimming is not always only a team uh, individual sport. You, ha you have your teammates and relays and all of that. It's, it's so fun and just being able to celebrate with a lot of your teammates at the end. And we did manage to win in my grade eight year and then we didn't win again until my matric year. So um, that was the highlight of my high school career, I would say. <laughs> I'm sure you're leading by example at school. Um, I mean, you must be hugely popular amongst the girls at school with the, the Olympics on the horizon and having been <laughs> to the, the Youth Olympics and et cetera. I mean, how do they actually react towards you, the other girls? Yeah, well, actually, they were quite chilled because, I mean, I'm, I'm an, I love all of the girls there and I'm in a great relationship with a lot of them and they are also very supportive and all of their... It, um, I think most of the girls congratulated me and um, were very nice towards me. It wasn't something huge like, oh, wow, Danae um, won a silver medal. It was just, and what I really, um, what I will carry with me for the rest of my life is my principal and some of my friends came to the airport once I landed from Youth Olympics. And they were there and they sang something for me, like one of the school's like, most popular songs that we sing. And they sang for me. And I mean, that was just amazing. Like, I think I started crying. Um, so they, they're very special. And I will cherish, I will cherish the five years that I have been there for the rest of my life. And do you know, you talk about your dad quite fondly. Um, is your family quite a tight, tight family between your sort of sister yeah. and, your sister and your mom and dad? <laughs> yeah, definitely. We, <clears throat> we do a lot of stuff together. And um, my mom and my dad and my sister, Everyone is very, very supportive. We are all sport people, so we all love to do sport. I think my dad ran about eight comrades marathons um, and my mom about six. So and my sister also swims and she's starting to make her junior Africa and um, South African teams. So we are a very, very comp competitive family and also very supportive. We, we, um, my parents try to travel with me everywhere they can it's obviously a little it's expensive because in south africa we have to pay for most of our tours by ourselves so but i would say we we love doing stuff together we are literally i think we are one of the closest families i know of <laughs> but yeah and uh, that uh, close support must be absolutely invaluable yeah. um you're going to miss that support next year you're off to the university of georgia that's a big decision yeah yeah, it was a very massive decision and it was very, very hard. Um, I always wanted to go to the U.S. since I was a little girl. My dad and I used to look at the girls that go there. And a lot of them from South Africa also went there. And it was very hard because I have amazing support here. I'm, I'm currently at Texas, I'm at Texas University with Linda. And they have been just amazing um, supportive-wise. They supported me in everything and... It was very hard because I've been with Linda for, I think, seven years now. So leaving her is also going to be very, very hard. But it was a very personal decision. Um, it did take a lot of time. And um, I basically just made my, my decision. Um, I want to use my talent in swimming to see another part of the world and to gain some experience internationally and to um, go study there as well. And in my 200 fly especially, I don't have a lot of girls that swim any girls actually that swim 200 butterfly against me in South Africa. So being able to go to America and train with some of the best in the world and um, to race almost every weekend against some of the best in the world is going to be a great experience. And it's going to push me to just be a better swimmer as well, just to have that competitive vibe, I would say, of girls swimmers around me. Yeah. And um, obviously it's, it's a long way from home. You've obviously traveled a lot before already, but have you been away from home for an extended amount of uh, time before? No, I think the longest I've been away from home was about three weeks, which were when we were, um, when I was in South Korea last year. I, actually, it was two and a half weeks. So I haven't been away for too long. And at the beginning, it was very hard because I'm very close with my family, as I told you before. So it's hard to be away from my sister and from my mom and everyone. But I think um, it really helps to, um, and one reason why I chose Georgia as well is um, one of the assistant coaches, um, Neil Fashfeld, um, is a South African. He used to swim for Georgia. He coaches there now. So just having someone that's uh, like a home away from home understands what's going on, um, understands how hard it is to be 
an international student, so like 16 hours away from home, flights away from home. So I think that definitely helps just having someone there that can really... Sorry. Sorry? No, I mean, oh yeah, obviously uh, your, your first Zoom call today, so you might be getting used to <laughs> that from uh, calling home. Um, what are you going to be studying yeah. in Georgia? Um, I'm looking at studying something in a business direction. I've always been interested in law, so I actually want to, maybe after my major four years, I want to go further and study law for the next three years. But I'm still not sure about that one, but definitely want to go into something maybe like marketing in a business direction. And you mentioned a little bit earlier um, the lack of, of depth in terms of butterfly in South Africa. Um, you haven't been beaten for three years in, uh, in butterfly. Um, that's quite a, a, a little record to hold on to, huh? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm very humbled to have that title. But as I said also, um, there, there's not a lot of girls that swim 200 butterfly at the same speed as I do. And I think that will be great for me to go to America and gain some of the, some experience in that field there. But in the other hand, in the 100 Butterfly, I have um, people like Taylor Lovemore and Aaron Gallagher, which is very, very fast in the 100 Butterfly. So I love racing against those two girls and they're also amazing. So just racing against them is incredible. And also in like the 200 meter freestyle, Rebecca Mito is one of my best, best friends. Um, we've been racing together for since we were like 12 years old. So I do have a lot, I do have a lot of competition. It's just not in my main event 200 meter butterfly. So that's because that's the main focus. I think it's, um, it's going to be great for me to just go to America and gain some experience there. Having chatted to both Aaron and uh, Becky already, the three of you are very similar in terms of um, your, your strength in terms of personality. You all seem very strong and very... Uh, strong world which is great to see yeah i think we have a, <clears throat> a great girls team we um i think we work a lot together to try and keep each other spirit up all the time and when we are feeling down we just message each other or and i know rebecca and i we have been close friends for a very very long time for like an example in 2017 i was struggling a lot at commonwealth games um junior youth commonwealth i didn't do great at all and she um, asked me if she can pray for me and I mean that's something your competition don't usually do and um, I mean just having someone like that and like Erin who's older than me who I can look up to and Rebecca is the same age as me just having a friend that's close by that has the same goals as you and we, we just motivate each other and I think that's amazing. Oh, it's, it's fantastic it's good to hear and it's something yeah. you guys should hang on to for as long as you can. Um, yeah. you know, 2018 was a big year for you. Uh, you were the youngest member of the South African team at the Commonwealth Games. But then the Youth Olympic Games, you were the first South African athlete ever to win a medal, uh, winning silver in the 200 fly. That must have been a, a phenomenal moment. Yeah, well, the first goal. Um, Chad managed to also. So um, I was the first goal. Yeah, it was. it's amazing. I actually didn't even know that at the time when I wanted it. And my dad told me, oh, you know, you were the, the first girl who ever managed to get a medal. So, I mean, that's amazing. And I'm so proud of myself because I, I worked incredibly hard each and every day for that title. And it's just amazing to, and the way I felt when I touched the wall, it's just knowing that all of the hard work that I put in over the past few years did pay off. And yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I'm very proud of myself. As you should be. And uh, it's something that <laughs> you should, you. You should uh, push out as, as much as you can. Um, 2019, you, you won the 400 meter in South Africa and the 200 meter fly um, to, to be SA title holder. Um, but then you went to swim in the World Aquatic Champs. Um, big difference in terms of uh, quality uh, from the Youth Olympics? Yeah, so what I did is I tried to focus on Junior Worlds in 2019 and not taper down and rest for Senior Worlds because it's still at the big stage and I tried to because I did good at Youth Olympics, I tried to target Junior Worlds. So I didn't taper down for Senior Worlds at all, but I actually surprised myself with the times that I swam there. I swam on my PBs and I managed to swim a PB in the 800 freestyle. So that was just amazing overall. And the swims I managed to see there, Caleb Dressel and Katie Ledecky and all of those people, I learned a lot from that. And being able to stay in the same village as them was just amazing. So. 
it was huge. It was a lot bigger than Youth Olympics. And um, yeah, I loved everything that I learned at junior at senior worlds. It was amazing. And do you have a preference in terms of stroke from uh, butterfly to freestyle? I would definitely prefer about butterfly. Um, it's my favorite stroke by far. And, but I love freestyle as well. And it's nice to just um, go between the two um, strokes because butterfly is very hard on your body. So just being able, especially in training, just to have another stroke that you can rely on, it, it really helps. Yeah. And Danae, I mean, there's been a lot of swimmers for you to look up to um, in your young career. Uh, there's the likes of Penny Haynes, Chad Leclerc, uh, Roland Skuman, I mean, I could go on for forever. Yeah. Has there been somebody specific that you really looked up to that you not want to model your career on, but kind of think, wow, I'd really like to follow in their footsteps? Yeah, so Karen Prin Prinsley was also... My, was my biggest role model when she still used to swim. She mentored me for a few years um, when I was little and still in like primary school, going on to high school. And that really helped me a lot in every aspect of my life. And she's just an amazing person in and out of the pool. So she was a big part of my life and still is. And she, um, yeah, she played a big role in my swimming career. And now having Tatiana Schoenmacher right next to me in the pool every single day, she, I must say, she's one of, the, one of my biggest role models. Um, seeing how hard she works and how she never, ever gave up. I mean, she missed 2016 Olympics by 0 0.01 split. And then now she's breaking um, African records. She won a silver medal at um, Worlds and two golds at Commonwealth Games. And seeing her next to me in the pool training and actually seeing, oh, wow, someone from South Africa can be amazing like she is. It's really motivating, and um, I have a very close relationship with Tatiana as well, and she's an amazing person outside of the pool as well. So having her by my side, as I said, and she's also very supportive. So just having her, it really helps, and she's, yeah, she's an amazing swimmer. <laughs> well, it's good to have all of these people around you just to uh, yeah. lean on for um, experience. Um, do you know, you, you mentioned, obviously, swimming is a big part of your life. From personal experience, my wife was a swimmer growing up. The hours are ridiculous. I mean, you're in the pool at five o'clock in the morning and then you're in the pool in the <laughs> yeah. afternoon. You're obviously very close to your family. What do you do away from the swimming pool? Yeah, so um, I actually draw. So I have a talent in drawing. So I love sketching. And um, that's something I enjoy doing a lot. So I try to do that. And then um, obviously school takes a lot of my time currently. I'm in my final year of high school. So... Now, especially with um, COVID that just hit, it's, I have to work every single bit of time I get. So <laughs> mostly schoolwork takes up a lot of my time. But I mean, I just love hanging out with my friends, just going, I love coffee so much. So just going on coffee dates with my friends and um, just hanging out with my sister as well. We have a very, very close relationship. So um, on weekends, I, I actually, I try to get as much rest, rest in as possible because during the week, it is very hard um, training every day and trying to manage school as well. So I try to recover mostly over weekends. But yeah, I would say just hanging out with my friends. It's just, yeah, that's the best thing. <laughs> you mentioned hanging out with your friends. Are they sort of very understanding in terms of your position? Because obviously you can't go out every night and stay out yeah, late. No. Um, so from a sort of advice perspective to younger athletes, you obviously have to be very dedicated to your sport. What sort of direction have you taken in terms of, okay, yes, I've got my friend circle and they need to understand that I'm dedicated to my swimming. How do you actually manage yeah. to sort of balance that? Yeah, well, as when I was very young, I, I made the decision that I want to, I have this goal in mind. I want to go to the Olympics one day and there is a lot of stuff that I have to give up. So I have to give up late nights going out with my friends. And um, there is some friends that I have lost along the way that didn't have the same, um, that didn't understand what I was going through. But that I think that is just something that you have to start personally for yourself because at the end it is, if you have a goal in mind, you have to do anything and put anything um, aside that you can and push everything that you have inside of you towards to make, you know, make that goal. So um, the f friends I have now that I've had for the past three years are the most understanding people. And they understand if I say, hey, listen, I can go out for about two hours, go drink coffee, go eat something, but I can't stay out too late because I have training in the morning. 
And I haven't had one friend that told me, you know what, sorry, um, you always say no, we don't want to be your friend anymore. Like they they're very understanding. And I think just um, telling people and being open with people and telling them, you know what, I am, this is what I want, I want to do um, with my life. And I want to get that goal and get to the Olympics, for example, having people that understand that really helps. And they are also very um, supportive. So just having that supportive circle, it really helps. So I think just, you know, you need to know which people you can um, surround yourself with that will help you to get where you want to be. Yeah, very wise words to me. Um, just in closing, you, you've mentioned the Olympics quite a bit. Um, twofold question. One, what's been um, your, your best moment of your career so, um, so far? You sort of think back and, wow, I can't believe I did that. Uh, and second question, what are the dreams for the future? Yeah, so I would definitely say the Youth Olympic silver medal um, I won was the most amazing thing ever. And I can't remember, actually remember anything of the race, but just touching and seeing how my family celebrated on the, um, the stands, because they were there, my mom and my sister and my dad, and just seeing how happy they were and their expressions on their faces. I think that is literally the most amazing thing. I will never, ever forget that. And um, yeah, so that would definitely be the highlight. And I still can't believe why wow, I went so fast and how good I handled the pressure that night because I went in seated first and um, being able to still get on the podium, I think I'm, I'm very proud of myself and how I handled that. And then, um, yeah, I would definitely, as I said many times, I would want to go to the Olympics, represent South Africa. And it's always been a dream of mine to win gold in the 200 meter butterfly. So that is my end goal. And yeah, I'm very excited for the future and what I can, just to see what I can do. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Dana, I mean, it's been brilliant chatting to you. You certainly have your feet on the ground and uh, I think your future is very bright as long as you, you carry you on so in much. the direction you're going. Good luck in the Thank US you. next year. Good luck at the Olympics Thank next you. year. We'll all certainly be watching out for you. Um, and you uh, so we look forward to seeing a gold medal around your neck one of these days. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the call. Thank you very much for your time. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Look out for tomorrow's episode of Sport SA Daily Diary where we chat to a young cyclist who's tearing up the road and the trails.